Uh, the next algorithm that we're going to have a look at is uh, the RSA. RSA is named after its uh, in, uh, inventors, or drivers, Adi Shamir Leonard Ilm. In fact, uh, Adi Shamir is also associated as the uh, crypto analyst for Merkel Knapsack algorithm. He, in fact, um, uh, invented the attack to expose the vulnerability of that particular algorithm. Now, the RSA um, is now the de facto standard for the asymmetric encryption. In fact, if you look at the many of the websites that have been secured by the TLS, the digital certificates, we're going to have a look at the digital certificates and digital signatures after a couple of videos once we start covering up the integrity as well as a part of this mastering CSSP lecture. So the, uh, at the moment, um, you know, in addition to the uh, elliptical curve uh, crypto system or ECDSA, RSA is also used as the digital signature algorithm predominantly. So it provides encryption and digital signature in one direction and the decryption and the signature generation of the reverse direction. Okay, so once we get onto the TLS part of it, then you'll have a clear idea on how we're going to um, engage this uh, RSA for the key exchange. In fact, we discussed about Defe Hillman, but there's a concept. The, the actual scenario, if RSA is used as the asymmetric algorithm for digital certificate, so the, the key exchange is facilitated because the key needs to be exchanged with the server in an encrypted format. Okay, the RSA will help in, in actually doing it. It's based on the uh, prime numbers and it's factory. The next um, slide, we're going to have a look at uh, how this actually works. Now, step one, it's not as simple as what we actually see here for, you know, uh, the using numeric three and 11, but it's going to be a very large number. But for the illustration purpose, let's choose P and Q, the co-prime, okay? So three is a prime number, 11 is a prime number, then compute N, okay? So three multiplied by 11 gives you 33. This part that we are actually going to use on the last uh, ultimate and the penultimate step. Yeah, 33, and uh, the third step, is to compute function n, which is equal to the uh, the multiplication of p minus one and q minus one, that is 20. Now, step by step, if you actually follow, you will actually get on to the private and public key. So if you look at the uh, last uh, uh, fourth and the third step from the last one, you will see how do we choose the public and private key. In the actual scenario, the RSA is involved with the keys as of 100, 200, etc. Okay, uh, 1498 is also a key size for the RSA. But whenever we choose the key size for the RSA, we should always recollect the factors. The fact that the larger the key size, okay, more difficult it is to break the algorithm, but it's going to cause a performance impact. In fact, when we discussed about the triple disk, I said the triple disk has got a very huge performance impact as compared to the DES, okay, the disk. So the triple disk key size is 168 out of, out of 192. The remaining 24 is used for the parity. So 168 itself is going to cost you a tremendous performance impact. Just imagine if you're going to use RSA 4098. Okay, it's next to impossible for somebody to actually break it. But the entire objective of encrypting a plain text, okay, and to retrieve it back is actually lost. Okay, because of the performance. But it also depends upon the amount of data that we're actually going to encrypt. So the RSA predominantly is used for the key exchange. It's used as a key encrypting key, KEK. -E and we will discuss about this uh, TLS handshake in detail, um, you know, during this particular uh, cryptographic series as a part of mastering CSSP. So I request you to hold on until then. Now for your CSSP examination, they will not ask you the questions with, with respect to the illustrations, okay, just for the information, okay, just to understand how the RSA works. In fact, we did a computing using Playfair, Vigenera, et cetera, so they're not going to ask you questions on uh, the Vigenera cipher or Playfair cipher to ask you to encrypt and decrypt. No, the same thing holds good for RSA also. Just for the information, you remember this illustration, it is always easy to answer the questions related to the RSA. Attacks. Copper Smith attack and ROC is turn of the Copper Smith. Okay, again, you don't have to go so deep into the Copper Smith attack and Roca attack. 
But yes, you shouldn't have feel that RSA was never attacked. Okay, it has flown to the Copper Smith attack and the ROC attack. Merkel Hillman knapsack was actually released in 1978. It was not based on the prime numbers like RSA, but based on his theory. It was actually broken by uh, uh, Adi Shamir, who is also one of the inventors for RSA, by polynomial time attack targeting solely only the public key. Okay, again. You don't have to go so deep into what this uh, polynomial time attack actually is, but you should know that Merkel Hillman knapsack has also been attacked. So the, uh, the the algorithms which have been attacked and the key has been recovered. Okay, they are actually called the broken algorithm because the algorithm is broken. Not that every Tom, Dick, and Harry can actually break the algorithm. These are all broken by the research organizations and the researchers. Okay, now having. Let's say even, let's say I'm a researcher, I want to break the algorithm. I can find out the vulnerability, I can report it. But as a hacker, if I break the algorithm, what is that I'm actually going to get? Does it have a hack value? Can I sell that and make a fortune? If no, okay, it's a waste of time for a hacker. Okay, there are a lot of factors that you should actually consider before we uh, say an algorithm is weak or algorithm is strong, etc. So as I told you, the DES has been broken. But uh, because of the broker algorithm, not that everybody can actually break it. Okay, you need to have the infrastructure. You, do, you need to have the application to actually break it. Okay, and uh, after breaking it, okay, what is that you want to get? Also matters. For the researchers, it's a different ball game. But for the hacker, no, he need to make some money, right? He cannot just uh, you know hack on to a particular data, which is of no use to anybody in the world. Okay, so just consider this. When we start looking at the algorithms, the broken algorithm, is it really weak? It may not be really weak, okay? But for the researchers, they have found a way to break it, but not everybody is a researcher in the world. So um, thanks for watching this video. Stay connected by subscribing to my channel. The next video, we'll have a look at, um, you know, the elliptical curve cryptography before jumping on to the integrity. Cheers then. Bye-bye. Enjoy your day and happy learning.